Welcome to Core Cutting today for July 23rd, 2019. This is the show where I give you a quick look at some of the biggest stories happening in the world of core cutting and give you my opinion on them. Now, this is my opinion. If you want to learn more about these stories in the show notes down below, I'll put a link to each story so you can read about them for yourself. Come up with your own opinions. I'd love to hear from you. If you are new here, hey, do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, helps us out a lot. Hopefully we can help you break free from the high cost cable TV and still watch the shows you want with daily videos on how-to guides, breaking news, weekly core kind Q&As, even a weekly core kind podcast. So hit that subscribe button, helps us, and hopefully we can help you out. Well, let's dive into it because a lot has happened in the past 24 hours. Starting off with Amazon announcing some details about their Amazon Prime Day. So last week, Amazon Prime Day happened. A lot of good deals, especially on Amazon products. And according to Amazon, the Amazon Fire TV sold millions of devices during Prime Day. So I would love to hear from you, uh, which one of uh, these devices did you get? Did you have Fire TV, any model, Fire TV recast, according to Amazon, it was the best day ever for the Fire TV recast. With other devices like the um, Amazon Echoes leading the way there too. So it would be not a big surprise because Amazon really pushed Prime Day about their particular devices to take advantage of that and it seems like it's paid off for them. So I'd love to hear from you. What did you get? Um, anything you really struck stood out to you other than Amazon devices? Leave us a comment, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. But it is interesting to see the Fire TVs doing really well, selling millions of devices out there, and maybe helping Amazon continue to grow their market share in the United States and around the world. All right, according to uh, uh, Ultraviolet, you have about a week left to move your um, movie or videos and TV shows. So Ultraviolet, you may have remembered it as the codes that you would find in DVDs and Blu-rays, right? You'd get this, buy the DVD, get a digital version also with Ultraviolet. If you happen to have any movies or TV shows in your Ultraviolet library, you need to link it to something like Vudu by the end of July. According to Ultraviolet, at the end of July, they will be shutting down the service, and if you haven't linked your account with another service like Vudu, you will be losing your Ultraviolet collection. Seems like um, Disney's Movies Anywhere service, which is a very similar idea, but not only do you have to enter a code, but you can do things like link your Amazon and your iTunes and more to, uh, if you bought it on iTunes, view it through Movies Anywhere, no matter where you purchased it. So it's a cool service, and it seems like that has kind of taken the place of Ultraviolet. The good news is you don't have to lose anything, but you do need to go and mer or link your account to something like Vudu so that your movies and TV shows will transfer over to Vudu for future enjoyment. With Vudu being backed by Walmart, I don't expect to see things like Vudu going away anytime soon. So check that out. Now, I'll put a link in the show notes down below if you want to get full details on how to save your movies and see the step-by-step -step guide. But I'd love to know, do you, did you use, I should say, Ultraviolet? Did you enjoy it? Are you sad to see it go? From talking to people, a lot of people don't seem all that surprised and a lot of people don't seem all that upset. I know it's a little bit of pain to have to take a quick step, but Ultraviolet seems to have made it very easy to save your movies and TV shows um, from destruction and loss. So I'd love to see what you think of this. I'd love to hear your thoughts about um, Ultraviolet. If you used it, leave us a review. I'd love to hear you. I played around with it a little bit. I didn't have a bad experience. Didn't say I was overly impressed with it. So I'd love to hear your stories about Ultraviolet. All right, moving along to one of the big stories that I thought was very interesting. According, uh, when we break it down, Comcast customers pay three times more per channel than Sling TV. This is something that we get a lot of um, comments about, like, hey, you know, core cutting can't save you money, right? Well, when you really look at it, you take the uh, similar packages of Sling TV's um, total TV and the digital starter package of Comcast, Comcast charges you almost 3.7 um, times more per channel than Sling TV does. Sling TV is around 30 some cents. Comcast is over a dollar per channel. And this really goes back to the whole argument of is core cutting cheaper or more expensive? And it really depends on what channels you want. I find that these two packages for the main channels offer very similar lineup and very similar amount of content, which I think a lot of people will like. Uh, it really depends on what you want. But when you look at the price, when you look at the savings, you can't really argue when you can say, hey, it's Sling TV is giving you content at a third the price of Comcast. So I'd love to know how much money are you saving when you cut the cord? 
Are you getting everything you want for that savings? I know when we cut the cord, we saved over $100 a month by ditching our DirecTV bill. We already had um, Netflix, we already had Amazon, we added Hulu. So we really um, were already pretty much there. We already had the devices. So I'd love to know your experience. How much are you saving? Does it surprise you that Comcast costs three times more than um, Sling TV when you look at it per channel? And it, I find that very interesting. And this definitely does take into account things like the fees that are included because if it's a fee you have to pay to use the service, I include that as a base cost of the service. So check that out, link in the show notes down below. Roku players versus Roku TVs. This is actually one of the most common questions we get about um, Roku's is, should I, do I need to get a Roku TV or is a Roku player um, the right for me? And there's really no wrong answer here. It really comes down to what do you want? Do you have a TV that's perfect, doing everything you want, you don't need to upgrade the TV? Then definitely consider getting something like the Roku Stick Plus, the Roku Ultra, etc., for a far cheaper price than throwing away that very expensive 65 inch, 55 inch, whatever it may be, TV you have. If you do need a TV, Roku TVs are actually a great option. One of the reasons I like Roku TVs is the fact that Roku has a great track record of supporting their devices going forward. So you don't have to worry about, hey, this TV may work now, but in a year or two from now, will they still be supporting it? Will they get new apps? Will Netflix suddenly stop working or Hulu, um, which has been something happening to some smart TVs with Hulu recently. And that's why I highly recommend a Roku, a Fire TV Edition TV, et cetera, because they're maintained by, in this case, Roku or Amazon. So I would check that out. Hopefully that helps you um, there. I will put a full link down below to our full story, breaking out the different points, explaining what a Roku player is versus a Roku TV. Roku TVs do do a few, a few things that the Roku players don't, mainly things like these inputs here where you can go and say, hey, I, I don't want to use an input button, I just want an icon on my screen. The antenna has some cool features like the ability to pause live TV, a traditional like grid guide that pops up at the bottom showing you what's coming up for free. So it's a pretty cool feature. I would say check it out. But I'd love to know, in your experience, did you go with a Roku player or Roku TV? Maybe just in broaden, did you go with a streaming player or a smart TV? Let me know, I'd love to hear from you. So, all right, let's keep moving along to the next story up of the day. Vidgo is something that's been announced for years now. It's another live TV streaming service and it actually launched earlier this year with a Spanish lineup of channels that will give you access to different Spanish uh, language packages. They, when they announced it, it was aimed to take on Sling TV, PlayStation View, etc. Now they say their English packages, which will do just that, will launch here in the next couple weeks. Back at the pay TV show, Vidgo announced that they intended to launch their English package, the full-blown service, in the summer of 2019. Well, now the summer of 2019 is here, and now they've announced a partnership with a mobile company to promote the service, and um, I'm assuming probably maybe put Vidgo pre-installed on their phones, we'll see, but that they will also be launching in the next couple weeks. I think this is great. I know some people are like, oh, there's so many services, why bother? You know, we don't really know the pricing, we don't know the channels, so I say, hey, more competition, the better, right? There's nothing wrong with the idea of having additional competition to put pressure on the slings, on the YouTube TVs, and the PlayStation views, and DirecTV now. More competition is great. Now, will all the services make it? Probably not, but I do believe that most of them will be successful. I do believe that this is good for core cutting overall to have competition out there, so I'd love to know. Have you tested out the Vidgo international packages? Are you part of the beta test of the English ones? Leave us a comment, let us know what you think of it. And we'll be covering this if and when it launches. We will have full coverage over at corecardsnews.com. Let you know what we think of it. All right, last story up of the day. at and new um, Xander, I apologize, Xander service. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, which is an ad-based platform, their Xander community, now powers ads for Philo TV, Tubi, Zumo, AMC, a &E Networks, and many more. The marketplace for ads on your TV is one of the hottest um, segments of the advertising industry. This is stuff that Roku has been dominating recently with a huge lead versus a lot of these, but now at and is jumping into this with both feet. at and definitely wants a big chunk of that. Ad-supported platforms, you know, Pluto TVs, um, 
Tubi, Zumo, and more are very popular. But even the ads that appear on things like Philo TVs, On Demand, AMC, and A and E, and more, it's a huge marketplace there, and at t wants in it. So they launched uh, the, um, we'll call it Xander, X-A-N-D-R, Xander? That sounds good to me. Um, about a year ago, they announced it, now it's in full swing, and now it's adding a lot of partners. Keep an eye on this. Ad-supported free content is really becoming a major factor in core cutting and a major factor in online streaming. As that grows, look for more and more companies to get into um, the advertising. So my question to you is how do you feel about AT&T partnering with all these services? Have you noticed any change in the quality of ads on things like Philo or um, uh, Zumo TV or Tubi? I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to know what you think of that. And of course, if you want to learn more about it, including comments from many of these different services about the about using their at and ad platform, check out the show notes down below. Well, that's it for today. Thank you so much for your support. Check out the links down below for all those stories. And I will be back tomorrow with more cord cutting news, tips, tricks, and how-to guides. Take care, everybody.